Hello and welcome to the Tech Latest Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 Web Interface Video Tutorials. In today's video, we are going to discuss about API and Stable Diffusion. How to enable and use it along with Stable Diffusion Web UI. So let's dive in. Stable Diffusion is a cutting-edge open-source tool for generating images from text. The Stable Diffusion Web UI opens up many of these features with an API and interactive UI. We have separate video where we discussed in details about Stable Diffusion Web UI and its features. Here we will focus on API. API is the acronym for Application Programming Interface, a software intermediary allowing two applications to talk. APIs are an accessible way to extract and share data within and across organizations. APIs are all around us. Every time you use a rideshare app, send a mobile payment, or change the thermostat temperature from your phone, you use an API. The downside of Web UI is that it is meant for a single user and works great as an interactive art tool for making your own creations. However, if we want to build applications using this as an engine, we will need an API, a lesser known or rather a lesser documented feature of the Stable Diffusion Web UI project is that it also has a built-in API. The Web UI is built with Gradio but there is also a fast API app that can be launched with the Python command. This gives us an API that exposes many of the features we had in the Web UI. We can send post requests with our prompt and parameters and receive responses that contain output images. The Stable Diffusion API is organized around REST. API has predictable resource-oriented URLs, accepts form-encoded request bodies, returns JSON-encoded responses, and uses standard HTTP response codes, authentication, and verbs. The Stable Diffusion API uses key to authenticate requests. It supports all the basic functions like text-to-image, image-to-image, instruct pics to pics textual inversion, inpainting, outpainting, via inpainting, and lot more. If you are using Stable Diffusion Virtual Machine Solution by TechLatest.net on any of cloud platform that is GCP, AWS and Azure, then API is already enabled and you can access it right away. But if you want to launch one by yourself, you can launch it using Python launch.py, no web UI command. To access the pre-installed A pages, Copy the public IP address of the virtual machine and paste it in the browser's address bar. Access the API page by navigating to slash docs in the address bar after the public IP address. Like this here. Press enter. And here we have a PI page. Now let's see how to use it. We'll go with the text to image example here. Search for text to image API option. Here is my text to image option. Click on the Try It Out button. After clicking on the Try It Out button, this will enable the Request Body and Execute button. I will copy this code snippet in the Request Body. Once ready click on Execute button. It will take some time. We can track the, the progress from in the terminal by running tail command. Like this. Here it's showing the progress. Once image processing is complete, in the API Web Console, it will show 200 as the response code. And the response field will have a response in JSON format with the image in the images field of JSON. With Tech Latest Stable Diffusio solution, if you want to disable the API or want to make any further configuration changes then please update the configuration file. For that, connect to VM via SSH. Open SD per boot.sh file using V or Nano Editor. Go to line 20 and line 23 of file. With this Python command here, we are launching the web UI as well as enabling the API here with this command. You can remove this API parameter to disable API access. Save the changes. And reboot the VM. Now you should have your new setup running. So this is all about API backend, where you are providing the parameters to generate the image but how to fetch them in front end. For that, you need to start constructing a payload with parameters of your choice. Like this here. You can provide as many parameters as you want. The API will use the defaults for anything you don't set. 
Then invoke the API using this. Make sure to provide the URL of your web UI in the highlighted area. Then web UI will generate an image. After the backend does its thing, the API sends the response back in a variable. And in this example that variable is response. The response contains three entries, images, parameters, and info. We need to get this entries in some variables and send it to the front end. First, we will put this line to make it easier to work with the response. Images entries will have generated images. But we don't have any JPG or PNG file here. It's a giant string of random characters. Apparently, we have to decode it. This is how we can do it. With that, we have an image in the image variable that we can work with, for example, saving it with image.save as output.png. Parameters shows what was sent to the API, which could be useful. You can fetch this information as well. And the last thing here is info entry. Info contains the metadata of the images. We can use it to drop metadata of generated images into web UE PNG info. For that, we can access the PNG info API. We will need to feed the image we got before into it. Like this here. After that, we can get the information with this response object here. The sample code that should work is this. That's all for this video. In this video we covered how to enable Stable Diffusion API and tried to show you how to send the response to the front end, which we received after calling the API. TechLatest.net provides the Stable Diffusion with automatic 11.11 web interface offer in the form of a virtual machine solution on leading cloud platforms including Google Cloud, Amazon Web Services AWS and Microsoft Azure. To ensure you have the best learning experience and can follow the course content seamlessly, we highly recommend provisioning the pre-configured Stable Diffusion virtual machine solution available on these cloud marketplaces. Here's how to get started. Go to www.techlatest.net slash sd. Click the provided cloud provider marketplace link. Follow the on-screen instructions to launch the VM. To make the provisioning of VM easy for you, we have step-by-step -step guides, which shows all the steps in details. All the links are in the description. Thank you for watching.